Alrighty guys, hello and welcome back to another video. So over the kind of lifespan of my channel, I've tried to help, I try to help a lot of new players um, and I end up getting a lot of very, very similar questions, which leads me to believe that there's probably a lot of new players that have kind of questions like that. Some of them are like, what mod is that? Can I use mods and ladder slash ranked custom games? How do you have your hotkeys set up, etc.? cetera? Um, and those are gonna be some of the questions that I'm gonna try and answer in that video. Um, I've done some videos on this content in the past, especially surrounding hotkeys, but um, I went back and actually watched that video and ugh, it was not good. Um, my audio mixing was terrible, so I figured I would rehash it here uh, so that because A, some things have changed in the way that I have my hotkeys set up and B, hopefully the audio won't be dark on this particular video. Um, so let's get into it. Um, if you guys could hit that like and subscribe button, don't ask for it a whole lot, but it really helps me out. <laughs> a lot of it is, a lot of it is built around the way that YouTube has built their monetization policy. So you guys are seeing ad on, ads on these videos. I don't really see any revenue from those videos, which means that I can't invest back into the channel or into hosting tournaments or things like that as much. So getting to a thousand subscribers would be super, super helpful. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it now. Hotkeys first. I recently had to rebuild my hotkeys after re-imaging my computer. So for the newer guys that are out there, first, welcome to possibly the best real-time strategy game ever made. And second, you will need hotkeys in multiplayer. Uh, they help in the campaign, but you can definitely beat the campaign without hotkeys. But I think if you wanna be, if you're just playing this game for fun, like, you know, take it or leave it, hotkeys will help you be better and have like a higher rating, I genuinely think. Um, but take it or leave it. This is how I have my hotkeys set up. So before I got into Forge Alliance Forever, um, I, the game I played most seriously was actually Dota 2. Um, I played for Texas A&M's esports team and getting to the semifinals at nationals at one point. So um, I was very, very comfortable with like a QWER setup for hotkeys and having hotkeys centered around that. Just hand position, everything like that, that just worked for me. So I've built out my hotkeys to be similar uh, to that within Forge Alliance Forever. So my hotkey settings, I have mass extractors set to Q. I have templates and I've done this in another video on my channel, I'll link it down in the description below, but I have that set to W. Uh, e is set to manual reclaim. So if I want to reclaim quickly or uh, reclaim like a lab or an engineer that gets dropped onto a cliff that I'm trying to drop as well, it allows me to do that pretty quickly. R is set to factories. And then I have A set to power generators. Um, I leave patrol set to P just because I don't use it a whole lot. Um, attack move is set to control A, once again, like right in that kind of area. Um, I have U set to unload transports. Again, not something that I do all the time. Um, and then I have buttons on my mouse that mirror one, two, and three, uh, which is set up to either grab idle engineers on screen, grab all ASF slash interceptors, and then grab all uh, direct fire land units respectively. So like tanks and bots and assault bots and things like that. So um, I have these bound to buttons on my mouse. If you don't have buttons on your mouse, it's not the end of the world. You can bind them to one, two, and three right up at the top. Uh, usually people use these for control groups I don't find control groups in Forge Alliance Forever super helpful just because like static control groups where you do like control one, control two, just because uh, the amount of units that you're making and then, you know, that are dying is really, really fast. So you could lose an entire control group in, you know, a handful of seconds. But again, personal preference, if you use control group, uh, then if you use control groups, then maybe look at a different setting for uh, either grabbing tanks or grabbing aircraft, which I think are the two most important settings for those hotkeys. Um, this is a default one, but control shift will show you reclaim values um, and they will be, uh, will show reclaim values on the screen. So you can see how much reclaim immediately uh, instead of manually adding it up in your head on the fly. Um, this is what's comfortable for me based on what I've done in the past in other games. Um, so my, be my best piece of advice is if you find this comfortable, if you try this out, it's comfortable, great. That's fantastic. Um, if it's not comfortable for you, find something that is comfortable for you, whether it's, you know, shifting things over to like uh, G, H, J, and K or something like that. Um, find out what's comfortable for you as far as where you like to rest your hands, things like that. Um, so now how to set up hotkeys. I'll load into the game real quick and I'll, watch you, I'll walk you guys through uh, where you can kind of set up hotkeys within the game and kind of how to do it, so to speak.
Okay, so how do you actually set up your hotkeys? So it's all going to be done within the menu within Forge Alliance Forever. So I recommend loading into a flat map like this just by yourself uh, to set things up, test them out, make sure that they are how you like them. It's gonna be under key bindings within the menu. So loading into key bindings, you've got a bunch of different things that you can choose from up here. Um, you can also kind of filter and hopefully be able to search. You can see like what things are bound to what. Uh, so if you have a binding that is conflicting, you can see what it's conflicting with. But if you try and override a binding, it'll give you an option whether you want to override it or not. So going into orders, these are some that are pretty important. So having overcharge bound to one, uh, having patrol bound to one, reclaim being bound to one. Uh, you, pause is another one that I actually didn't talk about before, but this will pause factories. It doesn't pause the game. Uh, so this will actually pause factories. So if you've got an air factory that you need to pause, you want a hotkey, uh, Z is a good one to set up for me because that helps me keep, tab, keep tabs on it. Other ones that you're gonna wanna set up are gonna be under the hot building or alternative hot building. So the alternative hot building, whoops, that's extra keys. So I have this set up, I bound Q to build mass extractors. This is also so that I can build T2 engineers out of a factory um, if I remember to ever push Q. Um, but the hot building section will assign multiple units or multiple uh, buildings to a particular hotkey, depending on what you actually have selected. So a really, really good example here is gonna be static AA, plus air staging, plus mobile AA flax, air fighters, aircraft cruisers, mobile artillery. So D is bound to a bunch of different units, either selecting or building. Uh, so, but if I close this menu out and go to my commander and I hit D, it's just gonna build AA turrets. Uh, and it won't let me cycle to anything else because the other things that D are bound, is bound to are things that my commander can't necessarily do. So the other things that D is gonna be bound to are air staging, mobile AA flax, air fighters, and aircraft cruisers, cruisers, and attack boats, which would be uh, like the Aeon mobile AA boat. So that's kind of how you go through and set up your hotkeys. Some of this is gonna be a little bit of trial and error. Um, the best ones that I would recommend are sticking to the hot building as well as alternative hot building section. Um, not as much messing around with the extra keys that are down here, just because this will only bind one building or unit to a hotkey and the hot building, uh, alternative hot building or hot building itself will have more, uh, will add a little bit more flexibility into your hotkeys. So that's kind of how you set them up as my commander is setting up anti-air turrets. Okay, so next topic is templates. Um, by and large, I did a whole video on this. It allows you to set up a pre-made organization for buildings. And I'll have that linked down in the description. I had, do have this tied to a hotkey. I do think it is incredibly helpful um, for specific templates. The ones that I think are the most useful for me are uh, land factories around the mechs, as well as the point defense with walls around it. It just really makes point defense way better if you put walls around it and nobody can be bothered with manually placing walls around their point defense. So um, I think that that's really important. Again, I'll link the video down in the description below. I go into a lot more detail in that video on how I have them set up as well as how to set them up. But those are, I think, other important things that you need to be uh, potentially adding to your arsenal as you're a newer player. So next is micro. Um, a lot of people have asked me what I think about micro in Forged Alliance Forever. Like, is it important? How does it compare to other RTS games? And I don't think that it's as important in Forged Alliance Forever as it is to other games like Age of Empires 2 um, and other RTSs that are big in the space, uh, especially StarCraft. But um, and that's one of the reasons why I really, really like it so much is because I'm not very good at micro. And so I'm going to gravitate towards games that are more macro oriented instead of micro oriented. And FAF is a good example of that. There is some examples of micro, um, things like manually reclaiming engineers on a drop, which we talked about a little bit earlier. Um, could also be things like positioning mobile artillery or mobile missile launchers outside of your main army to take down a firebase. But that being said, they're kind of few and far between. If you go and look at like AOE2 as a perfect example, I watch a lot of AOE2 casts. I don't really play AOE2 that much, but I do watch a good amount of casts and watching like Viper or Hera or any of the pro players in that scene do like 
archer splits uh, against mangonel shots and it's quick walling especially like i don't understand how they have that much attention to a particular space in the game uh, especially whenever in Age of Empires 2 you can't zoom out all the way like you can in Forged Alliance forever. So that being said, there are a handful of techniques that can help you and give you an edge in Forged Alliance forever. But the crazy micro stuff that you see in Age of Empires 2 that the pros do, and even honestly, if you're like a mid-tier Age of Empires 2 player like myself that you load in, people are still like freaking quick walling and splitting and I don't understand it, which is probably why I'm dropping rating like nobody's business in AoE 2 and I've stopped playing. <laughs> Um, but there are a handful of techniques that can help you out a little bit, but it's not central to the overall gameplay. Forge Alliance Forever, just with how many units are on the screen um, and how big the armies are actually going to get, much more macro oriented, which is awesome in my opinion. So next, getting into mods. Uh, so first question, I get a lot. Can you use mods in ranked games? And the answer is yes, with a caveat. So you can use UI mods in ranked. These are things that change the way that the game looks, but don't necessarily like add or take away units uh, within the game. So some examples of UI mods are things like uh, Supreme Commander scoreboard. You see that all the time in my casts, uh, the reclaim counter um, among many others. So like uh, advanced th target priorities, um, idle engineer mod, um, all of those are things that won't impact the overall rating of the game. And you can use those if you load into ladder or if you load into a custom game, those mods you can still have enabled. So mods that are unranked are going to be build restrictions or anything that changes the way that the game is played. Um, some examples here are the TNG mod, which allows like leveling up of units, Black Ops, Supreme Commander Total Annihilation, and others that either add units or change units, etc. Incidentally, the way that you can make a ranked game unranked is going to be going into unit restrictions and there's a little pink button on the right side of the screen that you can click and that's like a dummy drone that does absolutely nothing but because that is a restriction it will unrank the game so the mods that i use um, i use additional camera stuff and i use this mostly for thumbnails and uh, camera shots within my cast so i mean kind of take it or leave it there uh, it's useful for me just for content creation but um, if you don't want it, uh, I wouldn't call it important at all. Uh, advanced reclaim info. I really like this one a lot. This one will allow you to see how much reclaim is on the screen at a given point in time. So hitting control shift, you'll see like all the little dots, but with advanced reclaim info, it'll add a little icon in the upper left-hand side of your screen that you can, that will aggregate all of that reclaim for you. So say you've got, you know, 15 tanks, five aircraft and then like a GC or something like that. You don't wanna just add all that up in your head on the fly whenever you're thinking about a bunch of other things. So this will allow you to hit control shift, look at that button. You can see that the exact number of reclaim is. Um, I usually have a factory on the front that is trying to feed engineers uh, to the front line to try and vacuum up that reclaim and having advanced reclaim info can be very helpful as far as where you actually wanna position that factory and which lane you actually wanna put it to. Next mod that I have is NVIDIA Fix. Um, not sure if it's necessary anymore, but if you have a, a recent NVIDIA graphics card like I do, um, then this will help cap the frame rate. So without this mod previously, again, I don't know if this is 100% necessary anymore, frame rates would fluctuate all over the place. And this was actually not even unique to um, Supreme Commander Forge Alliance. Sins of a Solar Empire also ran into this same issue. I um, mean, it's bound to some way that the cursor is actually handled within the game, I think. Somebody with a little bit more technical chops might be able to weigh in there, um, but it caused a lot of frame drops and stuttering in the game. Uh, so this is a good thing to help eliminate that. Uh, people in your custom games will thank you. Your life will be easier. Everybody's life will be easier. And that's what we're all about is everybody's life being easier, right? Okay, next one is Supreme Scoreboard. Um, I mostly have this enabled so that I don't forget it to turn it on for casts, um, but it's not bad to have on during games either. Uh, it lets you see reclaim info. You can throw shade at your teammates for the fact that they're not ecoing hard enough and don't actually do that unless you're friends with them. Um, but it's a good mod, uh, especially if you want to get into casting. It can give you a lot of really, really good insights as far as what the game and how the game is uh, actually developing from an economic standpoint, kill death ratio, etc. 
So that's it for my mods. Uh, the other mods that would be of note that I don't have enabled, one I mentioned earlier, advanced target priorities. Uh, this allows you to change what your units prioritize first. So this can be helpful if you're dropping engineers and you want them to target power, uh, engineers, if you're dropping uh, mobile artillery and you want them to target power first instead of mass. This is something that you can set up within that. I'm just personally too lazy to go through and set it up. Um, no shake to eliminate camera shake and mini map zoom to disable the mini map when zooming out. Um, so the oblique jagged has this on, but if you zoom out, you'll see his mini map disappear uh, so that he can see the entire screen. Um, these are ones that I don't have enabled, but I see them enabled a lot. A lot of people use them, so I can only imagine that they're helpful. Um, but let me know what you guys use down for mods down, for mods down in the comments. Uh, hopefully we can all make this game more accessible to newer players. And with that, I thank you all you beautiful people for watching. Uh, like I said, consider subscribing so Google isn't the only profiteer from my videos. Um, and if you're like me, you try to get all of your friends into Fortune Alliance forever and they laugh at you. So share this with your friends getting into the game. Uh, and hopefully we can get make this game more accessible and easier to get into for everybody. Um, that being said, that's all I got for you guys today. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.